Hello brothers and sisters, I'm Vance Dykes and thank you for joining me for another one of my videos. You know, the last time that I went to church, I was in the truck with the priest of my church, Father Tim, and he knows about my journey to the priesthood and he took the time to ask me, you know, why do I want to become a priest? Like, basically the question was, what is my motivation to become a priest? And you want to know something? I have to be honest, I never really took the time to think about my motivation of becoming a priest because, you know, the only answer that I have to give is that, you know, I've always felt that calling to the priesthood for a long time and for many reasons, you know, such as, you know, I thought I was being called to the priesthood in the Catholic Church and I'm not ready to take the vow of celibacy in my life right now because I still want to be married. I want a wife. And also I wanted to pursue a career in law enforcement. I wanted to be a police officer, maybe work my way up to become a sheriff, maybe an FBI agent. And, you know, with, and one reason after another. And, you know, as I developed more into adulthood, the older that I got, the more I started to realize, you know what, the priesthood really is important to me. But because I want to get married and I still want to be Protestant, you know, I wasn't really ready to, you know, pers not that I wasn't ready to pursue the priesthood. It's just that, you know, if I was going to do it, I wanted to make sure that I did it on my own terms as in, okay, if I don't have to take the vow of celibacy, and if I don't have to sacrifice any of my beliefs that I've always held so near and dear to my heart as a Protestant, I'm all for it. I'll find that church. And I did a lot of research and eventually through research and of course praying to God that he would help me to find the right church, I eventually came to the Anglican church. And ever since then, I was always an Anglican. I served as an, Ang as an altar boy at the Anglican altar. You know, I've had the responsibility of lighting candles, bearing the cross to the altar, and reading portions of the Bible during certain parts of the worship service. And, you know, I've just always felt it. I've always felt that strong, burning passion in my heart to become a priest. And then I started to think as time went on, you know, we used to be friends with a Pentecostal preacher in the family, and he was near and dear to everyone in the family. And my family loved him. His name was Brother Henson. And um, when he died, obviously the family was sad. You know, my mother came to my room to tell me that, you know, Brother Henson was gone, and she was in tears, and I embraced her because, you know, I understood that he was such a close member of the he wasn't a member of the family, but he was a close friend of the family. That's what I meant to say. And then, of course, later on, you know, Billy Graham, one of the greatest televangelists of all time, died just as well. And one of the things that I thought to myself was that, you know, a lot of good preachers are going. They're, they're being called home to the Lord. And, you know, what's going to happen when all the good preachers are gone? I think, I think televangelist Dr. Charles Stanley, I think he's still around, and he's another... Um, a preacher that my dad likes and you know I usually trust my father when he says certain things because I wouldn't know my father to lie and my father is one of the most moral people that I can think of in this world he's not perfect but I would tr let's just say that I would trust him to be president of the United States aside from anyone else and with that being in mind you know I just started to think to myself you know what's gonna happen when all the good preachers are gone what's gonna happen what's gonna happen in the church you know more than likely, a lot of false preachers are going to come into the church and they're going to lead the children of God astray. You know, we could have more, we could have future Jim Joneses coming in and building their own people's temples, like the original Jim Jones and the people's temple, and it would be like genocide, mass suicide all over again, you know? There are some preachers in this world who preach some very destructive doctrines that are anything but Christian, that are anything but God-like, anything but Christ-like. And, you know, just like my father, I have my own trust issues sometimes. And, you know, that was one of the things I was thinking about. You know what? I trust myself. I know that I'm not going to tell a lie. I'm not going to try and preach a doctrine that's incorrect. I'm not going to preach man's doctrine. I want to preach God's doctrine, the God who actually tells the truth, the God who actually leads people to eternal life rather than eternal destruction. Even in this world, you know, if it, even, if, even if it's just temporary, it still preaches a big message, like the mass suicide of Jonestown. I'm not sure where everyone's soul is now. I don't know. 
I hope for, I hope that a majority of them are in heaven and Jim Jones is in hell. I hope that because Jim Jones was a monster. You know? So I care about the church. I care about the flock. I don't want to see anyone go to hell. I have that heart for people in here, you know? You know, even homosexuals, you know, for the most part, Christianity does teach that homosexuality is a sin. And you got all these preachers, all these Christians, like the Westboro Baptists, who always preach that homosexuals are going to hell and all that other stuff. And I'm not going to deny that there are some homosexuals who are some decent people. And even some of them have had an opportunity to become preachers in the church, like Bishop Gene Robinson. I bring him up, for example, because he's a member, he's a bishop in the Episcopal Church, and these are supposed to be Anglican and Episcopal videos. And, uh, you know, I, there's no doubt in my mind that, you know, that Bishop Gene Robinson is a great guy, that he's a wonderful preacher, and he, he's a man who's all about bringing the love of God and the love of Christ to all people, and especially regardless of their sexual orientation. But if homosexuality really is a sin, and I'm sorry to say that there's no doubt in my mind that homosexuality is a sin, you know, I can only hope and pray that what Roman Catholics have always preached about purgatory is right. Because basically in the Roman Catholic Church, they teach about purgatory, and that purgatory is supposed to be a place where people who are saved, who accept God, and they live righteous lives to the best of their ability, but they still have certain sins about themselves that they haven't repented of, when they die, they will go to this fiery inferno. It's, it's temporary, unlike hell, which is eternal, but it's temporary when you're in purgatory. You're just purged of your sins, whatever they may be, and then once you're 100% clean, then you go to heaven. You know, I'm not too sure if that's true. I'm not sure if purgatory really is real, but for the sake of these individuals, I hope so. You see, that's another example. You know, I don't want to see homosexuals go to hell. I don't want to see people go to hell because they were gay or because they didn't worship God. They worshiped like maybe Zeus or Anubis or Thor or whatever, or because they just didn't believe in God at all. You know, the scriptures, they're very clear and very firm in the beliefs and the teachings that, you know, if you accept God and accept his Christ, Jesus is your Lord and Savior, and live a righteous life to the best of your ability and repenting when you do sin, you will go to heaven. But if you reject God, reject Jesus, reject anything that's good, and you live a, an evil, immoral life, especially what the Bible considers to be evil and immoral, then you go to hell. I don't want to see anyone go to hell. I don't want to see homosexuals go to hell. I don't want to see idolaters go to hell. I don't want to see anyone go to hell. So I do have love for people, you know, regardless of whatever the situation is, what up, regardless of what kind of people they are, what they say about God and Jesus, what they say, whether they believe in the teachings of the, of the Bible or not, you know. So I think about that and I think, you know what, I do have good motivations when it comes to becoming a priest. I really do care about people and I don't want to see them led astray. I don't want to see anyone go to hell. So... As far as I'm concerned, my motives are pure when it comes to becoming a priest. And there's no doubt in my mind that I'm going to become a priest, but I still pray with all my heart to the Lord God of hopes that as long as I keep studying, as long as I earn my degrees, as long as I keep being active in the church, there should be no reason for me to not kneel before the bishop, have him place his hands on me, and say, you are a priest. So... Thank you for watching this video. Goodbye and God bless. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, go forth now in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia.